Mr. McCoy here with today's edition of Literacy Corner. It features comparing accounts of the same topic. The topic is Titanic. The two articles are The Unsinkable Titanic and The Sinking of the Titanic. As we sail into these articles, we will look for similarities and differences. Here they come, so stay tuned. And now here comes the unsinkable Titanic. Be on the lookout for the similarities and differences between the unsinkable Titanic and the sinking of the Titanic. For more than a hundred years, the story of the Titanic has fascinated people. It was the largest passenger steamship ever built, already world famous when it was launched. One magazine proudly called it unsinkable. But that pride would crumble on Titanic's first voyage across the Atlantic Ocean. The Titanic's fate was sealed on its maiden voyage from Southampton, England to New York City. At 11.40 p.m. on April 14, 1912, the Titanic sideswiped an iceberg in the North Atlantic, buckling portions of the starboard hull along a 300-foot span and exposing the six forward watertight compartments to the ocean's waters. From this moment onward, sinking was a certainty. The demise may have been hastened, however, when crewmen pushed open a gangway door on the port side of Titanic in an aborted attempt to load lifeboats from a lower level. Since the ship had begun listing to port, gravity prevented the crew from closing the massive door and by 1.50 a.m. the bow had settled enough to allow seawater to rush in through the gangway. By 2.18 a.m., with the last lifeboat having departed 13 minutes earlier, the bow had filled with water and the stern had risen high enough into the air to expose the propellers and create catastrophic stresses on the middle of the ship. Then, the Titanic cracked in half. Once released from the stern section, the bow fell to the ocean floor at a fairly steep angle, nosing into the mud with such massive force that its ejective patterns are still visible on the seafloor today. The stern, lacking a hydrodynamic leading edge like the bow, tumbled and corkscrewed for more than two miles down to the ocean floor. Compartments exploded, decks pancaked, heavier pieces such as the boilers dropped straight down while other pieces were flung off into the abyss. So what was it that caused the Titanic to sink? Share what you know with your fellow listener. There were 2,240 passengers and crew on that voyage. The ship left Southampton, England on April 10, 1912. It was scheduled to reach New York City 10 days later. But at 11.30 on the night of April 14, the Titanic hit an iceberg and tore open the ship's massive hull. As the vessel took on water, it began to sink. The ship's captain told his radio operator to call for help. Then he ordered the crew to lower the lifeboats. In the panic, fleeing passengers launched most of the boats with several empty seats. By 2.20 the next morning, three hours after striking the iceberg, the Titanic had sunk. Another ship, the Carpathia, was 58 miles away when it received the distress call. The Carpathia rushed to rescue the survivors. Only 705 people were saved. Newspaper headlines around the world announced the loss of the unsinkable ship. It quickly became the subject of countless books and films. In fact, the first Titanic movie appeared just a month later starring one of the survivors. British and American officials tried to discover the causes of the disaster. They looked at everything, from the way the ship was built to the actions of the crew. In the end, the main lesson of the Titanic was that no ship is truly unsinkable. Up next, more Titanic facts. As you listen to these facts, be prepared to share which one is most surprising to you. The most expensive tickets to travel aboard Titanic cost about $99,000 in today's money. The Titanic was almost as long as three football fields. To feed the passengers and crew, Titanic had 86,000 pounds of meat, 40,000 eggs, 40 tons of potatoes, 7,000 heads of lettuce, 3,500 pounds of onions, 36,000 apples, and 1,000 loaves of bread, 
on board. Titanic was one of the first ships to have a telephone system and electric lights in all the rooms. Including the four smokestacks, the Titanic was as tall as a 17-story building. Titanic had four elevators, a heated swimming pool, a gym, two libraries, and two barber shops. Each day, the passengers and crew used 14,000 gallons of drinking water. Titanic's engines used more than 800 tons of coal each day. The ship's top speed was 24 knots, about 27 miles per hour. Smokestacks and steam made by the Titanic's boilers escaped through three smokestacks. Builders added a fourth stack because they thought it made the ship look better. And Titanic could carry 3,547 passengers and crew. About 2,200 people traveled on its first voyage. So of those facts, which one do you consider to be the most surprising? Share with your fellow listeners. 1985 discovery of the Titanic stemmed from a secret United States Navy investigation of two wrecked nuclear submarines, according to the oceanographer who found the infamous ocean liner. Pieces of this Cold War tale have been known since the mid-1990s, but more complete details are now coming to light, said Titanic's discoverer, Robert Ballard. Ballard met with the Navy in 1982 to request funding to develop the robotic submersible technology he needed to find Titanic. Ballard is also a National Geographic Society explorer in residence. Ronald Thunman, then the Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Submarine Warfare, told Ballard the military was interested in the technology. But for the purpose of investigating the wreckage of the USS Threshner and the USS Scorpion, since Ballard's technology would be able to reach the sunken subs and take pictures, the oceanographer agreed to help out. He then asked the Navy if he could search for the Titanic, which was located between the two wrecks. I was a little short on time, said Thunman, who retired as a vice admiral and now lives in Springfield, Illinois. He emphasized that the mission was to study the sunken warships. Once Ballard had completed his mission, if time was left, Thunman said, Ballard could do what he wanted, but never gave him explicit permission to search for the Titanic. Ballard said Navy Secretary John Lehman knew of the plan. But the Navy never expected me to find the Titanic, so when that happened, they got really nervous because of the publicity, Ballard said. But people were so focused on the legend of the Titanic, they never connected the dots. And now here comes the sinking of the Titanic as we sail into this portion, be on the lookout for similarities and differences between this article and the previous article, The Unsinkable Titanic. Okay, here it comes. As the lifeboats pulled away, the officers ordered the bands to play and their music did much to quell panic. It was a heartbreaking sight to see the great ship go down. First she listed to the starboard on which side the collision had occurred, then she settled slowly but steadily without hope of remaining afloat. The sea was calm, calm as the water in a tumbler, but it was freezing cold. None had dressed heavily and all therefore suffered intensely. The women did not shriek or grow hysterical while we waited through that awful night for help. We men stood at the oars, stood because there was no room for us to sit, and kept the boat headed into the swell to prevent her capsizing. Another boat was at our side, but all the others were scattered around in the water. Finally, shortly before six o'clock, we saw the lights of the Carpathia approaching. Gradually, she picked up the survivors in the other boats and then approached us. So, based on all that you've learned in this edition of Literacy Corner, 
Why do you think people are still so fascinated about Titanic? Share what you think with your fellow listener. Yes, this marks the end of today's edition of Literacy Corner. Another is coming soon, and it will be equally deep. <laughs>